What's up guys, it's Joe with Logan Party 4Runner. Today I'm bringing you a video showing you our dual battery uh, setup that we've got in our 4Runner. I want to explain to you what we did, why we did it, why we chose that option, um, and everything we used to build this box. So if you like this option, you can do it yourself. So this is it right here. It's a 100 amp hour deep cycle battery with a DC to DC charger with three charge ports, uh, 12 volt uh, sockets and a dual USB. The reason I decided to go this route over say a Jackery, um, the Jackeries are very cool. They certainly have their place. But if you look at the instructions, you're not supposed to charge and discharge at the same time. One of the main uses that I have for a dual battery setup is to run a fridge 24 seven. So to go with their recommended way of doing it you would need to plug the fridge into your 12 volt of the vehicle while you're driving and then use the jackery maybe at night and then charge the jackery off your car 12 volt while you're also running the fridge off the car it gets a little complicated for a long trip to be able to do it now i do know for a fact that you can plug the jackery into your car plug the fridge into the jackery and everything can charge discharge at the same time and it does work they just don't recommend doing it so i don't know how it lasts uh, long term and you kind of have limited options to what other things you can plug into it but it's definitely a cool setup but it is expensive especially for the larger ones you, know, you can spend upwards of a thousand dollars on the jackeries um, i wanted something that could run the fridge all the time could run a few other things when we need it and it can charge off of the starter battery without having to think about anything. And I wanted it to be able to charge quickly and effectively. Um, but I also wanted something that was gonna be sort of portable and modular because we got a truck as well that we may camp out of sometime. And I'm also fixing to be building a uh, overland trailer. And I wanna be able to incorporate this into the trailer and just sort of use it across several platforms. That's why I didn't wanna go with the dedicated dual battery system in the 4Runner because it only works for the 4Runner. If I want to do anything else, I got to start all over. Um, not to mention those things are a little expensive too. So that's why we went this route. Um, it was very cost effective and it works and I'll be able to move it around. So that's sort of the rundown of why we went with this. Now I'll break down what it looks like inside here. Um, what it took to put all this together, and I'll show you what we did to the 4Runner um, to make it work. All right, it's kind of windy out here today, so I apologize that the wind is affecting uh, the audio quality, but we got to work with what we got. It's a cold November day. So, like I said, we got the three 12 volt ports, the two USBs. Other things we have on the outside is a four gauge Anderson plug, as well as a camera 16 or 18 gauge. Uh, power wire for the DC to DC charger. We'll go over all that in a minute. The only other things we have on the outside is we have a voltage meter. I don't know if you can read that in the sun, but I got 12.6 volts going on right now. That's pretty much it. The rest of it's just a wood box. So that's what we've got on the outside. Now we'll break it open and look at how the inside works. All right, here's what we've got inside. This is a Renogy. Um, AGM 100 amp hour battery in there and then this is a Renogy 40 amp DC to DC charger it's kind of the brains of the whole operation the um, cables that run from the starter battery and the forerunner I'll show you all that in a minute but it comes in to here um, the positive comes through a 60 amp I believe it is up 60 amp inline fuse in route to the charger then comes out through a 50 amp breaker to the battery the uh, red wire right here is how the DC to DC charger knows that the forerunner is turned on so this is fused to a hot circuit in the forerunner that comes on when the when the car started so it knows to work the other, the other wire that we've got going on right here is a limiter wire 
that goes right back to the positive feed from the battery and what that does is it cuts the uh, amperage in half on this for a one single battery to charge it's not supposed to charge more than like 28 amps um, and so that cuts it down to 20 but if I have this hooked up in series to another battery um, I've got the 40 amp charger so I can run it full power and charge up two batteries nicely so once we have the power coming through the DC to DC charger to the battery and then I just have everything um, wired up from there I also have a temperature gauge from Renogy that plugs directly into here that will tell this thing if the battery is getting too hot or whatever and of course I have all of my outlets um, fused with the inline fuse coming in here so it's fairly straightforward how everything works if you don't know how DC to DC works um, basically it's monitoring the starter battery and this battery it knows when the starter battery is charged it switches over and starts charging this thing and it's constantly monitoring the battery and giving the battery exactly what it needs and um, taking the voltage from the alternator and keeping it current uh, the correct uh, voltage to charge everything so I don't understand it completely either but roughly it's really smart it knows what to do and it keeps all the batteries happy simultaneously so this thing has worked really really well I haven't had any issues with it I can run my Iceco I believe it's a JP 40 for three three and a half days without the car running at all and without dropping it lower than the battery is supposed to go so now I want to show you what I did on the 4Runner to get everything hooked up. Alright, here we are under the hood and I've got the uh, Odyssey battery. I think this is the Group 34 battery. That's very common. Yep, AGM 34R. It's a pretty common uh, replacement for the 4Runners. 880 cold cranking amps supposed to be a really awesome battery and it has been so far uh, what I've got right here is a pair of four gauge jumper cables I got a link to them in the description as I'm going to do with everything everything that I used in here I'm going to get links in the description for so you can literally go through and buy everything I bought and do exactly what I did if that's something you want to do but anyway uh, I went with four gauge jumper cables because that was the cheapest way to get the wire that I needed it actually works really good because it marries the um, positive and the negative together it's super flexible um, it's very well protected and a 20 foot cable was enough to get everything that I needed done I just cut the ends off and put the correct terminals I needed on there so I got them hooked to the net positive and negative uh, runs down through the engine bay uh, let's see where is it it comes down right here and it runs along the frame and hops over the gas tank and then it comes into the back right down in here behind the battery box and comes out and hooks to this um, four gauge Anderson plug so also in here somewhere here we go is this wire and this is tied in to the 12 volt right here I was able to pop this up and just tap into this so when this is plugged in the battery box it then tells the DC to DC charger hey the vehicles on do your thing and it works so the box sits right here in the back I was hoping that the fridge would sit in front of it and fit and turns out it does not so it does take up a fair amount of room in the back um, and it is incredibly heavy those are the biggest drawbacks of it but you know the amount that I have in it is not all that much for what I'm able to do with it and I really like the versatility I plan on buying another one of these batteries and putting it in the trailer build that I want to do and then I'm going to put another Anderson plug on this so that I can hook those two batteries together and now this can charge both those batteries and now I'll do like another little extension cord of this so I can plug into that and then come out here plug that into the trailer everything's charging on the trailer 
and then I can hook all kinds of other accessories to that other battery that will stay in the trailer and everything will kind of work together. Then if I need to um, not use the trailer and I want to use just the Forerunner again, I can just pop that battery out, stick it in there, hook my fridge up, hook my uh, lights up to it, whatever I want, and I'm good to go. So if you want to see exactly uh, how I ran that wire and got everything hooked up, I'm going to throw in some clips to that at the end. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you learned something. I hope it gave you some ideas. Um, use those links that I have uh, provided for you to get all the parts you need. We'll get a small commission off of it. It'll help the channel grow. And other than that, I want to thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe, hit the like button on this video, and uh, check out our other content. Thanks, and have a good one. All right, so here's where I drilled the hole into the back. Um, this is the back of the seats. Uh, right here is this little trim piece that sits right there. I like that. Two bolts right at the anchor points. Take that out. When you take that out, this is what you see. And I drilled my holes right there. And that's a very good spot uh, to have some access from underneath. And for, uh, for reference of where that is, if you were to measure off of this center post where the uh, where the seat attaches, it's about nine inches. So nine inches from the anchor point there on the on the rear seat to the right, right in the middle there. You can get you two holes. My grommet should fit in there, and I'll show you what it looks like from underneath, uh, where that's a pretty good spot. All right, so now here we are underneath. Just for some reference, I know this is really close, but that's the drive shaft coming down to the uh, rear differential. And right there is the uh, the holes. And as you can see, it's actually a fairly accessible point. I don't have room to do it now, but I can actually fit my hand, my whole hand up in there and touch those holes. So I should be able to come down and the gas tank is right here and I should be able to lay it across the upper side of the gas tank over to the uh, to the frame up here and run it across the top of the frame until I get down there. All right, guys. So here is the holes with the uh, waterproof grommets and the wires coming through. And then I've laid out the piece upside down that covers that area. As you see, there's uh, feet um, right here. You have to cut these two feet off. I cut them off very easily with a hacksaw. Um, and then I drilled two holes right there for the uh, wires to come up through. And then I'm going to um, show you what it looks like when this piece is flipped back, up, flipped back over and reinstalled with the wire coming through it. All right, well, pardon the mess, uh, but this is what it looks like all finished up. Got the piece put back on. Got my four gauge wires coming through. 16 gauge power wire also coming through one of those same holes. I've got plenty of cord here. It'll reach almost all the way to the back. <coughs> so I got room, <coughs> sorry. I got room to move everything around. And uh, if I don't want this stuff, I can just cap it off, tuck it away, and uh, it's out of the way. So I've got my um, drawer system pulled out so you can see all that. Normally the drawer system comes all the way up and you can't see see that so like I said if I need it it's there I got room I can uh, have the battery box sitting anywhere in the back and if I don't want the battery box I can unplug it cap it off tuck it away and you'd never know it was there so it works really good uh, thanks for watching the video hope you got some ideas hope it was helpful and we'll see you on the next one